This night, praying to the Lord, I saw him as he passed into a world unknown. And who shall have the story of his death, which we have all heard from? Let us confess the heavenly treasures. Let us remember our love to our God. And you might be spared the conversion of the first gift here. Our scripture this morning is from Luke 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, 
and there I will store all my grains and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Here ends the reading of our scripture.
beautiful. Let's pray together for a moment. Holy God, sometimes we wonder how much is enough and how much is too much. How can we tell? Who are we called to help? Lord, help these ideas come together as we consider your word today. Amen. Many of you have heard of the humorist Jeannie Robertson, and she told a story about a time that she needed a birthday gift for her sister. Now the backstory is that Jeannie's mother had this brilliant idea. All three of her daughters had the exact same china pattern, and for their weddings, each daughter received a service for 12. The mother thought that way, if you need to have a dinner party for 24 or 36 people, no problem. You'll have plenty of matching dishes. Now, Jeannie's sister was having what we might call a milestone birthday. And Jeannie had been traveling, giving her speeches, and she had not bought a gift. And so it's her sister's birthday. She has to think fast. She went to her china cabinet and decided that she would give her sister the large platter in their pattern. Now, as that day went along, the value of that platter kept growing and growing in Jeannie's mind. Why, that's a big platter. It's worth surely $100. Then a little later, that $200 platter I'm just going to give to her for her birthday. And by the end of the day, in her mind, it was worth probably $1,000. But she felt she needed to give it to her sister because she had no other gift to give. And finally, she wrapped it up and drove to her sister's house. Her sister opened the gift and was amazed. She said to Jeannie, this pattern's been discontinued for years and years. How did you ever manage to find a platter to match? And Jeannie told a little fib. She said, oh, I found, it, um, I found it on eBay. And her sister flipped it over and said, that's funny because these are my initials. You've just given me my platter as my birthday gift. Well, there are some species of birds that co collect shiny things. Crows are known for that. Bower birds collect all kinds of things that are blue to attract a mate. And we humans, as we know, collect all kinds of things. Some people have a collection of classic cars. I've heard of people who collect race cars and they build multi-million dollar garages with turntables so the cars can spin in the light. Some people collect jewelry or dolls or even matchbox cars. Are you one of the people who has a collection of Beanie Babies at home? that you carefully protect from the elements and keep the tags on, you know, those will be worth a fortune one day. I had a coworker whose mother always hoped for a daughter, and so she started buying Barbie dolls. Each time a new Barbie came out, she would buy it and put it away in a closet and keep it in the box, hoping for that day. But she ended up with two sons. And when it came time for the oldest one to go to college, she decided to sell off her Barbie collection, in, all still in the original boxes, and made enough money to pay for the college education of both sons. So that was a pretty wise way to do it. Um, some people collect tools. I've known people who have huge, huge collections of tools, some of which they'll probably never use. I've even heard a rumor, just a rumor, that some quilters have a stash of fabric hidden in their homes that their spouse knows nothing about. Collecting things makes us happy. Well, today we heard another parable that Jesus told, and here's the setup. Jesus is preaching when a person in the crowd called out, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. 
Now, the first thing Jesus said is, I'm not a judge over matters like this. And then he tells the people to watch out for all kinds of greed. Life is not about how much stuff we have. And then he tells this story. A man's land was particularly productive one year, and he harvested so much that he didn't even have room to store it all. So he came up with a plan. He would tear down his barns and build bigger barns. And then, because he would have so much grain stored, he could eat, drink, and be merry for years to come. Well, if you're familiar with that often used phrase, eat, drink, and be merry, there's a little part we usually leave off, which is, for tomorrow we may die. And that's just what the man found out. That night, God spoke to him and called him a fool and said, tonight your life will end, and now who will benefit from all that you stored up? Now remember, this is a parable, not a real event. Jesus told it to make a point that being generous toward God is more important than piling up a bunch of stuff. So that raises a question. What would have been the right thing for this prosperous man to do? Well, I think the answer is pretty simple. He could have shared what he had with hungry people. Now, that, that doesn't mean he had to give away all that he had, but he could have shared the surplus, couldn't he? For this man, his grain became more important than anything else. He devoted his resources to building bigger barns so he could keep it all for himself. And Jesus called that greed. Remember that most people in the time of Jesus lived in poverty because of the Roman system of taxation. People didn't have much money at all, and they didn't have a lot of possessions. What they did have was land, and the inheritance laws were designed to keep that land intact. The oldest son would inherit the property. The younger sons got a share of the money and goods that were left behind when the parent died. Of course, most of us aren't farmers, and we don't deal in crops and barns, but that doesn't mean we're not like this prosperous man. We accumulate things, and then we need space to store our stuff. We build bigger garages, bigger attics, bigger basements. We build sheds, and there's a thriving business in storage unit rentals. In addition to the money companies make so fr from renting the storage units, they also often have sales of the contents of storage units that are left when someone dies and no one comes to claim their belongings. There's even a TV series, I kid you not, called Storage Wars, where people bid on the contents of storage units, usually without seeing them, or just seeing them for a moment or two, and then they hope to find treasures inside that will make them a profit when they sell the stuff. Much of what they find has little or no value. It's really just junk. And you have to wonder why someone paid to store that stuff in the first place. What if instead of storing all of the extra items we own, we would find people who could enjoy and use them? People who might not be able to afford to buy them in a store, but who would love to have them. That would be paying forward the blessings we have been given. What if we would sell the, th the things we no longer need and give that money to a charity or even to the church? What if we would go through our closets and drawers and get rid of the clothing we no longer wear? We could pass it on to one of the many programs that provide clothing to people at little or no cost. What if we would regularly go through our pantries and cupboards and give away the food that we aren't likely to use. There are so many programs that feed people that could use our extra food. Now, as a church, we're trying to live all of this out. We share our building, which is our most valuable resource, with the community and with two other congregations. 
we're not only sharing the space, but we're building relationships with people we might not otherwise meet. We share clothing and financial assistance for utility bills. When we have a meal, instead of throwing away the leftovers, we share them with people who can use them. We participate in the ACME cashback program, choosing what we purchase so that it will benefit our Trinity in the Community program. And when we face major building expenses, we always consider the value of the repairs to keeping our building functioning to serve ourselves and others into the future. Could we do more? Yes, we could. It's just a matter of deciding what's worth keeping and what's worth giving away. When something no longer has much value for us, there may be someone who would treasure it, and no one wants it. If no one wants it, we no longer have to use it. Um, but we can open up the space that it's taking up. Jesus tells us to save treasures in heaven instead of investing in temporary earthly things. So consider your monthly budget. Consider what you give to the church. Could you give a little bit more? Is there a favorite charity you might want to support? One of our monthly offerings that means a lot to you Put your money where it can do good things for people. Now, we sometimes hear that people don't want to support the expense of keeping this building going. Or maybe they're not fond of particular people on the staff, so they don't want to give money to those things. But please consider it's not just about any one individual. It's about building us up as a community of faith. And it's about keeping our facility clean and ready for all who use it. Now, in some churches, you'll hear a lot about tithing, giving 10% of your gross monthly income to the church. And that may not work for a lot of people, but can you at least give 2%? Can you take what you currently give and increase it by 1% or 2%? You will be blessed and you will also be a blessing. My friends, if we are living well, then we're working to bring our lives in line with what God wants us to do. So take time to pray, and be sure to take time to listen for the answers. Be generous toward God. Jesus taught that we should make sure that we have enough, and then give away the extra to help other people. Can we do that? Amen. I invite you to stand if you wish, and our next hymn is called, I Love You, Lord. Let's stand.
be seated. Let's join our hearts together for a time of prayer. I'll come back and ask for prayer requests. If you have any, just motion with your hand and I will make sure to get your, your request in. We want to keep in our prayers the family of Richard Plant, our retired association's associate minister. A memorial service was held for him yesterday and um, it was also live streamed, so I was able to watch it on my computer. Um, but it was a very touching and, and lovely service for someone who's meant a lot to so many people. Who else do we want to pray for? And I'll start at the back. prayer of thanks for people who are helping TNC with everything that, we're, that they are doing and um, with the uh, relationship with the, the uh, International Institute going well. What's that? Who does? Okay. Sally? Okay. Prayers for Sam's sister Sally, who's not well today. For Mike Thompson, who's had an infection in his leg and they've had to postpone his surgery twice, they've decided September 8th is the day they will definitely do his surgery, infection or not. Yeah. Okay. For the family of Eileen, who uh, passed away. Of, yeah. For the people of Kentucky, we've had floods, right? Yeah, it's been big floods. Okay. For for Pat, who's you said her sister, her twin sister just died and they had the, f the service for her. Okay. We want to continue praying for all who are affected by this ongoing COVID issue. Um, you never know where it will hit next. Um, and it doesn't seem to matter who or what, it just decides what it will do. Of course, ongoing prayers for the French family, ongoing prayers for the Gaither family as they welcome their grandchild into the world. It's interesting as a church that we can share our joys as well as our sorrows. We can help carry one another's burden. We can express love to one another when it's most needed. Let's take a moment to pray silently for those whose names you chose not to say out loud, and then I'll pray, and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together.
God, it's so important for us to remember that you are holy and we are not. We strive to be better. We strive to do the right thing. And yet so often our humanity gets in the way. We're so quick to feed our bodies and to take our leisure, and yet you ask us to do work for you. How much more important is it, O oh God, for us to feed our souls by being in the presence of the divine through prayer, through worship, to sing songs of praise to you, to recognize that you are in control no matter how strange things in the world may seem. Help us to give away what we have, the things that we have and keep but really don't need. All of it could be used by others. All of it could feed and grow the kingdom of God. Even in this time of prayer, God, come to us, whisper words of comfort and peace to us, fill our hearts with joy that knows no end. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus relied on the generosity of the people who followed him to support his ministry. And the earliest followers of the way of Jesus joined together as a community, giving all they had to make sure that everyone's needs were met. Even today, God's calling us to do new things and to be generous with what we have. Let's sing together the doxology, and I invite you to stand. us pray. O Lord, who teaches us heavenly ways, it's good for us to give. Help us to give joyfully out of our faith, so that our light may shine before all people and bring glory to your name. Amen. And now let's sing our final hymn, Be Still. Whoops, I have the wrong title in there, don't I? Glorious is thy name most holy.
Let us go into the world with our priorities set on heavenly things, eager to live our lives well. And let us share the good news with those we meet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul.